Hey friends, this is Eunice and welcome to the Journey Home Podcast. So today I'm really excited because I have my new friend on and her name is Zanita. And Zanita and I met in small group um, at our church, which is the old church in Colorado Springs, if you're looking for a church. (laughs) And um, we just clicked right away. Our hearts just really um, clicked on the first week that we joined together in small group. And I as I'm, I've been getting to know Zanita, I've been hearing more of her testimony. And I'm like, Zanita, can you share this with more people? It's amazing. And so, um, Zanita, thank you for being on today. And could you just introduce yourself a bit? Hi, I'm Zanita. And um, I'm currently uh, living in Colorado Springs. Um, my husband just retired out of the military after 21 years. Um, I'm an educator of 18 years. So I've, I've done everything from K through college. Right now I'm doing high school English. Um, I have four beautiful daughters, one who will be getting married this summer. So it's one of those years where like, boom, 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 but so many blessings here. Um, and then uh, just recently decided to uh, call Colorado our our new home for a while. And I'm originally from Atlanta. Well, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So I am grateful for all the military families that we've met here um, in the Springs and I'm grateful to your family, too, because your husband has served in the military. So that's kind of what Zanita is referring to about making Colorado their home, because her husband just like recently retired. Mm -hmm. So that is amazing. Thank you so much. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Big deal. Big deal. (laughs) Yeah, no, I love all the military families we've met here. You guys Mm -hmm. have just shown so much sacrifice for our nation and people like us that are just like civilians, you know, <laughs> we're grateful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So recently, Zanita, you shared with me some of your testimony about overcoming cancer. And mm-hmm. I thought it was so powerful. Um, I was wondering if you could share some of that with us today. Um, I would love to. So um, I'm actually still in the journey as far as I'm cancer free, but i um, about to come up with a very huge surgery coming up in a couple of weeks, but I'll just start back from the beginning of my journey. Um, definitely. Um, I got diagnosed two years ago, uh, two days after the 4th of July. Um, I was 39 years old, um, just living my best life in my head, you know, just being a mom, teacher, wife, all of the things being involved in church, no symptoms whatsoever. Um, one day underneath my armpit, I just saw a small, tiny little lump, but I kn- I remember in high school, I used to get clogged pores all the time. So I did not think twice about it. Um, I remember it like it started to become a little sore. And then I remember just calling my mom one day and like, Hey mom, this won't go away. And my mom is like very doctor, 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 go see the doctor, just clear your mind. So literally I just made a doctor's appointment to go in to see like, okay. Cause I just changed de- deodorant. So I was like, that's gotta be what it is. And I made a doctor's appointment and it was really interesting because um, I just remember that day, uh, just my guard was down. I just went in for a simple thing in between actually my planning period as a teacher. And um, and I just remember showing my my primary care doctor and she didn't really say much. She just looked at it and was like, hmm. And then was like, let's get you in to see someone else. Um, and to be honest with you, again, I think just because I was just like in the prime of my life, as far as just really busy, not thinking much about it, I was like, okay, cool. Um, never really thought about anything about mammograms because I was just, I'm a teacher. So we always do all of our appointments, holidays, vacations, or summertime. Mm, so yeah. definitely, um, I was only 39. So it's like, okay, mammogram would definitely be coming the next summer when I turned 40. But to make a long story short, um, I go and see they uh, another doctor who wants me just to do like a little ultrasound. And then I end up staying one. It was supposed to be a 30 minute appointment, end up being four hours appointment because um, they ended up seeing stuff and not really telling me. And they're like, oh, let's do this and let's do this. Um, ended up doing a, my first mammogram that same day, then an ultrasound that same day of the breast tissue. And then I just remember like, almost in a state of shock, like what is going on, right? And I just remember the head of the hospital, which is a really huge hospital, the radiation uh, director comes and talks to me and is like, yeah, we're seeing something that looks like breast cancer. And again, I think I just sort of, from the, I just remember that moment where like my life was never the same and it just sort of went like a million miles per hour because it just was never something that 
ran in my family. No women had it in my family. So I was just like, sort of like, what? Um, I remember just them saying, okay, we're going to go get biopsies done. And everything sort of started moving really quickly. Two days later, I'm in a biopsy room with my husband. They're doing like four hours, five hours worth of biopsies, just poke, poke, poke. And um, not really, I, I'm normally not a needle type of girl. You say the word needle, I fall apart, but it was just really weird. I was just sort of like, they're taking like a piece of like your breast out and like of my armpit out. And I'm just still, again, hearing people say in the background, nurses say, we're so shocked. She's so young. She's so young. And I think mm -hmm. just hearing that in the background, you're like trying to keep a positive attitude. But again, when you're hearing voices and that's re really what I want to talk about, it's just how to block out those voices. Cause I, I remember just voices all the time in my head in that battle of like how to block the voices out. So I remember everyone was super nice that day. They're like, give us a week. We'll let you know, blah, blah, blah. Everyone was very optimistic. I remember the very next day, I'm getting in the car with my husband. The girls are packed in. We're going to the grocery store. I get a phone call. It has the doctor's name on there. And I'm like, okay, they're going to like be like, oh, it was just whatever. And then that's when they just dropped the bomb. Miss Ricks, you have cancer. Uh, we wish you the best. You'll hear from new people just over the phone. And I just remember like, and just a little backstory, uh, and I can get into that later. My father, who was my best friend like of my life, he died of cancer like a couple years before. And so there's something triggering about that C word. And again, with him, cancer never ran in the family with him as well. So just hearing that, I think, is where my battle, it's almost like going to war, uh, really started. Um, and just to, to, to recap, I guess, um, I did five months of chemo, and I can get deeper into that. Um, after that, I was made with the decision, what do you want to do with your breast? Um, looking at my, my four daughters every day, I decided it wasn't about me. It wasn't about how to like, how do I want to look? It was just about get it, get it out, get it out. I want to, I want to live. So I had a double mastectomy three months later, I had 30 days straight of radiation. And then wow. here I am today getting ready for reconstruction a year and a half later. So Wow. And now, <laughs> yeah, no, that's so incredible. And so now you are cancer free. It's just a reconstruction surgery, like post. Correct. Mm -hmm. Wow. That, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. I love your, I love seeing your little girls <laughs> um, each Sunday and Thursday at small group and just, um, they're so sweet. So I could, I'm so glad you decided to um, address it so aggressively just for mm -hmm. their sake like they are just so sweet it's, it's beautiful seeing them Thank grow you. in the Thank Lord <laughs> so what are some of the things that the Lord has taught you through this journey wow um first of all I grew up a preacher's kid so um and just to let you know I always thought I was close with God and not saying I wasn't but like you don't really know if you're close with God until you're literally facing death in the face. And then you're like, am I really close with God? Am I really a believer? Do I really have faith? Like, these are the questions. Like, it's easy to believe in something like, oh, I need a light bill paid. Oh, you know what? My car stopped. I need someone to help me change my tire. And it's another type of faith where you're like, okay, it's literally like, if you think the wrong way, you could die. If you, if you are not guarding your heart and your mind and your spirit and your soul, you could die. Um, I never really thought much about, I, I know God had taught me because when he had, when my father had died of cancer, I, um, I told Eunice, I could literally hear, um, cause I, I did not take those years serious because my dad was such a man of faith. I really believed that he was going to make it through. And so it almost brought me closer to God. Cause I was in, I was in the word, I was praying my gospel music every single day. And then I like, six months later, my dad is dead, like out of nowhere, even when they thought he was going to make it through and he, all of the things. And so I just remember one day sitting in the parking lot of the hospital when we're trying to figure out all of these plans of what to do and hearing the devil taunting me and in my ear, he sounded like a man sitting in my car saying, where's your God now? Wow. Where is your God now? And when you're in that situation, because I, I can mm -hmm. be transparent enough to say, so many thoughts were going through my head that I wanted to walk away from God. I was done. I was like, are you kidding me? When you think about the thing you love most in this world and it's taken. And so I, it, it does challenge your thoughts of faith. 
and how to get how to get back up again. So I, I really believe like I thought I was healed from that, but I was never really healed from that until I was in my own battle. And that was almost mm. where I had to reconnect with my dad, which not my earthly dad, but my spiritual dad, because it was almost like if you think about an estranged child who like leaves a little bit and they're like, let me go try my own thing. I mean, they they know their parent is still alive and still there for them, but they're not like connected, you know, like that umbilical cord connection. And so it was like going back home. It was like, okay, you know what? Trying to, I pulled out journals from like middle school, high school, my twenties, because I, I tend to write down anytime uh, big miracles happen. Wow. I keep a journal of it. And oh, that nice. was like something I had to like physically, literally dust off because I didn't have the faith, to be honest with you. I was like, you know what? Uh, cancer's already won. I, I, I gave cancer credit for winning in my family for taking like almost like the head off of the snake is how I, I called it of our family of like my dad was the leader. So I felt like the devil had taken the, you know, try to divide and conquer and all that stuff. And so I was like, cancer's already won. And then I, I had to realize, why are you giving power to something? Why mm -hmm. are you giving so much credit to the devil? Like, that's what he wants. That's what Satan wants. And yeah. you just completely just erase all of the miracles of like, um, 39 years that God has given, you know, and it's like, no, and it's one of those things. And again, I want to go back to the military, not just like that mindset of like, okay, we're going to war. It's happening. Here's the blueprint. You can either go out there without like, your your pr protective gear and even when you have protective gear you got to have the mindset that takes training of the mindset to be able to be like okay fear has to go in the back of your like goodbye fear and you're only leaning on faith and so again god was teaching me um and i always do the we just talked about this in the prayer call which is funny because i believe in the anchor in in the middle of the storm because i lost everything i lost my friends i lost everyone and i didn't even tell anyone i told my closest people who i lost but the crazy thing is i didn't tell anyone because i was living in shame because i thought um because people kept telling me no one your age should have this no one your age should have this so i really Aww. was trying to believe it was something i did so god it was almost like I, like I, I drew a picture at this paint night was I was on a boat and God was the anchor and that was it. And I had to stay strong on what I knew. And it brought us closer than I've ever been to, to, to God was through the hardest time of my life. So, um, definitely teach me what real faith was. Cause I thought I knew, but I didn't know until it meant my life. And then I, I figured it out. Wow. That's powerful it is interesting how those like tests come back to mm -hmm. us if we you know run from them in the first time or whatever and but that is really amazing that you just faced it with the lord in the storm that's incredible and it's funny because you're talking about um you know the enemy speaking lies and so when i was praying about this interview today, the scripture the Lord gave me was Revelation 12 and starting in verse 10. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God. Oh, I just missed. Okay, I did something in my iPad. Okay. The kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah for the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And I really felt like the Lord was speaking the scripture to me about this interview, because I think that so many of us struggle with that. Just breaking down the lies of the enemy is like, mm -hmm. oh, wait, I've always believed this. Is this from a thought from God or is this a thought from the devil? Okay. And it is through the power of hearing just testimonies like yours that we overcome. And I, so that's why I love just hearing people's testimonies and sharing mm -hmm. them on my podcast, because it's like, it's like, oh, wow, Zanita made it through as a 39 year old. Like she fought through this with the Lord. I can do this too. Like people who are going through their own health journeys, mm -hmm. their own health battles, things that, you know, maybe um, are bleak according to the doctors. And yet mm -hmm. um, the Lord can help us overcome. And so Thank you for sharing that because that is really powerful. Um, yeah. What are, so what are some 
encouragements you just want to share with those going through a, a cancer or a, just a health battle or just any battle in their life? I feel like you'd have a lot of wisdom to share about this. Um, ooh, where do I start? All right. So first of all, one decision I decided to make when I was going through cancer was, um, not to look like what I was going through. And I know that seems easier said than done, but, and it was every day an intentional choice I had to make, which, um, I knew I did a pretty good job because when I announced that what I'd gone through, 99% of the people were shocked because every day I had a decision when I woke up, um, I could just wallow in my sadness and be like, what was me? Oh my gosh, the doctor gave me a year to live or I could have a different mindset. And I know, I, I remember back going back to, I joined, everyone was like, join these groups, these support groups that'll help you. And I remember those were the worst ever for me because when I would go to the support groups, it was always negative things. And I would leave sadder than I came to the meetings. And I was like, what, what is going on with this? And so it's almost, again, like I had to protect my spirit. And it's like, you know, how if someone's toe hurt, they immediately go to Google and start looking up, oh, what are the 50, 100 reasons why my toe hurts, right? Right. And it's, <laughs> it's like, and then it's never anything positive. Well, it might just be, you know, whatever. It's always like your toe needs to be cut off. So <laughs> like, it's like, you have to, you have to, if you're going through something, anything, um, the first thing I would tell you is to like surround yourself with that group of protective people who can speak life into to you, because mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. I didn't have it. I, I did listen to my gospel. I, I read the word, but like on those chemo days where I could not walk and my husband's having to carry me around at 39, I didn't have it to give. I, I had sad moments. I would look in the mirror and I'm seeing missing parts, right? And so I had to like surround myself around, not everybody, because that's another thing. Don't tell everybody your business. You got to tell people who you already know, have your back and allow them because it was hard for me to allow people to do for me Um, because yeah. I was always the doer. And so that was another thing God taught me was to just rest, rest in his word, rest in his peace, but allow other people because that's, that's the beauty of like what God does for us is, um, he, we are the vessels of his love. And it's not always where we're able to like pour into other people. Sometimes it's like a give or take every time. Sometimes people are sent into our life into pour into us. I remember the, the one, uh, couple of women that I did meet that were not my friend, quote unquote friends in that season, they were my lifeline as far as like, women who were like bringing me something to eat, um, praying over me and being there for me. Yeah, They're no longer here with me in this season of my life. But when I look back and I'm like, oh my goodness, what was that? Like God provided, he provided what I needed when I needed it. And I think that's the beauty of like the, when you're going through something again, and I, I want to just hit back on the health thing. Sometimes it's hard to talk to people that have not gone through your walk, right? And so I really suggest that you connect with people that have already made it on the other side. Mm. Um, find those people that are not like, yeah, it was horrible. I'm, it's, it's okay to be transparent and real, but you have to sandwich that with, but let me tell you, let me tell you all the things that God did in the worst time of my life. Yeah. And the, the thing that really stuck out to me was beauty for ashes. And it's one of those things where you don't really understand. But when I, when I can stand here today and I'm, I'm still missing body parts, I'm still like trying to regrow my hair. I'm still very transparent about my journey, but I can say God has restored a hundred times fold and he's still doing it. And so when I did have everything and everything was quote unquote going right in my life, I, I did not have the community that I have now. I did not have the faith that I have that I have now. So it's like, I had my physical things. I had my day-to-day -day life, but like when I lost everything, it's like when God started to rebuild it back, it was like on gold now because the gold is the deposits of faith that I have that like, no one can ever take that piece away. And I think that's the beautiful piece. Eunice is like peace and knowing he is the Prince of peace, like really understanding what that means when like, it's almost like if you're standing in a burning building and you're just like, I'm okay, I'm good. Like you can't buy that piece. It's like yeah. only something that knowing, having that connection to God for real that can bring you so. Um, that, that would be the advice I would give the people that are going through is definitely like connecting with people 
that have gone through that. And the only way for people to know that have gone through things is like you said, Eunice, is people have to start sharing their testimonies. And like I said, I, I thought I, it was shameful for me. And I don't even, when I look back, I'm like, why would I think I deserve cancer? Like, what did I possibly do? Like miss a bill or, you know, like maybe like park in someone's bad parking spot one day. Like, you know, like, what did I do to deserve that? Like I didn't, but that was literally the lie I was believing every day. Like, what did you do? You did something to tick that off. And then it reminds me back to Job in the Bible. Like when he was that, I really leaned on that when I was going through my thing, like he lost everything. People laughed in his face. He could hear the taunting, but he did not, he did not relinquish his faith. Mm. Well, that's powerful. Yeah. I completely agree with you about the, um, silencing the outside voices that aren't going to be supportive because it's like you said, anyone can Google what's happening to you and be like, Oh, Google says like, (laughs) you know, like this and this is going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and it's weird how people are eager to do that when you're going through a trial and it's like, no, no, no. Like I need faith right now. I'm blocking Mm -hmm. those voices out. And, and I think that that is um, it takes courage and discernment, honestly, because I feel like, even people close to you will say things that are just like completely unhelpful. And you're just like, like, <laughs> you know, like, the thing that used to, re- and I'm just going to be transparent because yeah. I'm real is like when my, my Christian friends who thought they were doing well by like, when I wanted to just cry or vent and it was just mm. like, pray about it, pray about it, pray about it. Yes, we got that. Right. But sometimes just allowing someone the space to just, take their mask off and just share their fear because it, it doesn't mean that fear is not there. It means that you should not just like sit on it and lean on it, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean that you should not allow yourself the grace to say, I'm scared or to allow yourself the grace to say, man, I'm sad. I lost my hair. I lost this. Like, I don't think this is fair because sometimes, and I learned this, like, it's okay to even go to God and tell him when you're upset or tell him when you're hurt, because if you really think of him like your dad, and especially for people that have had that parenting role or guardian role over a child, like they're going to tell you when they're upset. It doesn't mean that you're like, well, it's not my problem. They want to hear that. They want to be able to hear like, um, it, so that they can, he can comfort you in those moments. So like not just keeping that tucked inside, but being able to like journal aloud or having like that person who you can just feel safe with and then pray with you about it, right? But still uh, having that person to allow you the grace when you do have a bad day to say, hey, I'm having a I'm having a rough day today. Can you pray with me? Mm, that's awesome. Well, I have just been encouraged by your story, especially you just sharing even briefly about like how your husband was really there for you through that time mm-hmm. and just... um honestly, like a rock to you. (laughs) Um, It's just such a beautiful testimony of marriage. And, and so I loved hearing all about that too. So Zanita, thank you so much for being on today. Are there any last thoughts you have that you'd like to share? Um, I, again, I just want to say like, um, and my heart is always to women. That's, that's my, my bread and butter, as far as like, where I just love to pour into is, no matter if it's cancer or like divorce or whatever it is, like don't carry that shame. You're not the only person. Mm. And remember, like use your scars to be able to heal someone else, right? Use the stories of your scars to be able to heal someone else. It doesn't mean it doesn't hurt in the moment, but just think about when you're able to use that to be able to, because it's always going to be someone else, someone else, someone else who's going to go through the same exact thing, right? And so you have that choice, whether or not you just tuck it aside and just crawl underneath your bed and pull the covers over. But if we're really like plugged into what we've been called to do and everyone's like, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? Your purpose is to be able to bring people to God, right? And to be able to show the love of Jesus and to allow him to use you as a vessel, to Mm. pour into other people. And so when you look at yourself more as a vessel, um, it'll help, like, it'll help you feel that peace in your storm. Like, okay, joy will come in the morning. This is just temporary. Um, but tomorrow I'll be able to use this to help heal someone else. Wow. That's awesome. And I see you doing that, just encouraging so many women around church and stuff. And so it has been an honor having you on today. And Mm -hmm. I, I'm so grateful to you and I am thankful to everyone who is listening today. I hope that this 
podcast encourages you and please share it with someone who may be going through a cancer journey themselves or just um, needing healing in another area of their life. I think it could bring great strength to them. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have an amazing week. Bye-bye. Have a great one.